Okay, this is from Jeff Head's YouTube video channel. What you're looking at here is a 1 350th scale, very special uh, scratch build of a Arleigh Burke Aegis Destroyer, but this is a Flight 4 Arleigh Burke. The U.S. Navy uh, has just about decided to build a Flight 4 after the Flight 3s are finished. The Flight 3s will have these larger Aegis screen on it, but it'll be a single band radar. This ship I have uh, built uh, based on my knowledge of things, and I, I'm going to tell you what I've added to it because this ship the United States can build and in my estimation should build. They're talking about building between 20 and 40 uh, Flight 4 Burks. What I have put on this Flight 4 Burke will start up here uh, with the radar. And what you see on this ship is a dual band radar and the APARs are actually EPARs are much bigger than even on the Flight 3 and you can see those at the front on the front and there's two more on the back and then up above them you can see the second band and there's four radar illuminators for them as well and and two facing the other way and we'll see them in the back in a minute so one of the major things that this ship will bring to the fore is a dual band radar similar to what's on the Ford class carriers and what they were going to put on the Zumwalt. I also have an extra uh, deck in for a command deck uh, like the Ticonderoga Burks have, uh, the, the Ticonderoga Aegis cruisers have, which will be gone by the time these things are built. In addition, we've added all kinds of uh, very exotic and good uh, weaponry. This uh, ship, if you, if I back off here, you can see uh, there are three larger uh, MK-41 VLS installations. That's a 32 cell uh, installation there. This is one of the errors. These Burks are quite a bit bigger. They're about 50 feet longer than the regular Burks. And so there's position uh, for them to have these uh, additional weaponry. That's a 64 cell MK-41. And then back in the back is another 64 cell MK-41. So altogether you have uh, 128 plus 32 or 160 MK41 VLS cells. I then added as well uh, quite a few MK55 PVLS cells, that's peripheral vertical launch cells. A total there forward and then back here aft a total of 80 of those cells and so that makes a total of uh, 240 VLS cells on this ship. It's a ship that's about 45 to 50 feet longer than the normal Burke and about 15 feet wider. Uh, and some people ask, well, we, you know, that's, that's too big for the Burke, Burke, Burke hole, but uh, then I remind them that if they will take a look at the KDX-3 ship, Aegis uh, ships that we helped, Lockheed Martin and the U.S. Navy helped the Koreans built, uh, they are just a little smaller than this. They're not quite big enough to put a 64, a 64 cell uh, MK41, but they have 140 cells on them and are the most heavily armed Burks at this point. In addition, we've added some other uh, weaponry. Here uh, up front on this side, you see a Laws, that's a laser weapon system. It's a close-in weapon system that would be used uh, to shoot down missiles or aircraft out to about 10 miles. 
and on the other side in the same position we have right there a 40 millimeter rail gun uh, that would be used for the same type of thing uh, about 10 miles uh, about 10 miles uh, lean, uh, uh, range and then back here at the back you have two of exactly the same thing over the hangers these are bolt-on you know and so you've got a rail gun there and a laser right there so that would significantly help the close-in weapon system in addition we've got two C-RAM installations on this ship one aft there and one forward right there uh, the C-RAM has been a very very effective and very accurate uh, close-in weapon system many of our allies are buying them finally we have something that I call the ship's defense electromagnetic pulse generator this ship is going to have, in addition to its uh, uh, gas propulsion for propulsion, uh, it will have uh, two small nuclear reactors in it that will power all these electronic additions. And they are uh, similar but smaller uh, to the design that's used on the Ford class. So they're very powerful, provide a lot of electricity, they would be designed in the innards of this ship so that they could uh, augment the propulsion if necessary, but mainly be used for the uh, uh, the weapon systems that I just talked. These There are four of these uh, elect electromagnetic pulse generators, and they are meant to, to be uh, narrowed down, so it's almost like a beam of electromagnetic pulse that shoots out uh, up to 10 to 12 miles away and they would be mainly for missiles to fry uh, their electronics and so there you see them uh, here on the aft side and uh, if the enemy or our, our opponents want to harden their missiles enough to stop these then they're going to lose significant range and speed uh, in order to do that and so uh, either one of those is uh, good for our uh, purposes in addition it's an all electric uh, system inside of this ship we've got the hangar back here with the uh, two Seahawks and you can see this uh, Romeo MH-60R and uh, the U.S. Navy's got that baby back there and the other one that would be in the hangar. Uh, now I did have some problems. I took two one 350th scale uh, Trumpeter Aegis II destroyers and got the length, the extra length and the extra width from them uh, but I had a little, as you can see there on the sides, especially right there in the middle there and over on this other side, I had a little difficulty in getting those to come together the way I wanted smoothly. Uh, uh, so I had to use some putty and, and you can see that there's, there was a little trouble making those things uh, meet together. It's not too noticeable, uh, but the ship itself uh, makes very clear what we're capable of doing. And uh, the fact that we already have a 12,000 ton Burke in the Chijong class, the KDX-3s for the Koreans, tells me that we can build this, particularly if we put our minds to it, and use an all-steel construction, put the extra support in with the extra length and width that we have, uh, with this ship. I've got DDG 170 to be that. Uh, we already have, oh my goodness, with the Flight 1, Flight 2, and now the Flight 3, there will be right at 110 when they finish building the third, the Flight 3 ships. And they'll start uh, decommissioning the Flight 1s. But then we'll build 
uh, maybe 40 of these things. With 40 of these things, we would be able to put two of these in every uh, carrier strike group and amphibious expeditionary group. And they would be great to have two of these uh, really cruiser sized vessels, but that are, you know, 75 to 85 uh, percent similar to the Burks we're already building. So their maintenance, their building, and cost are kept down because so much of them are like what we're building now. We've just in, uh, increased the size, added internal things uh, that, that will cost but will save cost uh, because of the way they're built. Uh, and so with 40 of these, we could have two of these uh, with each of the, the large task forces, uh, two Flight 2A Burks, or one Flight 2A, and two Flight 3, or maybe two 2As and two 3s, you know, have six of these AGS ships, and then have the FFGX, which will be awarded this year or next, and be built so that a couple of those can be with each uh, carrier group and they will be Aegis ships as well. This ship will be able, along with the other Aegis, large Aegis vessels, uh, be able to do the cooperative engagement as well, which will make them very, very powerful in terms of using all of those Aegis ships to defend the carriers and the large amphibious expeditionary ships. So, I thought I'd put this out here. Uh, please read the entire uh, description uh, because I put everything that is, is being added in there and also a link to where uh, you can see a static version of this uh, with, with it pointing out where and what all those new units are that are on the ship. Uh, we added significant you know, uh, you know, with all the the mesh and the, the ladders, I really like these uh, uh, these particular ladders going up on the uh, uh, to the second uh, radar. You know, on top of them to do the maintenance, and then the uh, angled stairways and the angled stairways back here going up behind the bridge. Uh, we have the same stairways there and up here we also have ladders going up to the high high places on the ships so they can all be be reached one I think is pretty cool is we added uh, just below the main bridge uh, a ledge there where uh, some of the enlisted guys can get up there and clean the windows off whenever necessary and uh, that would also have uh, 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 a rail across there that they could latch on to. So there you have it. This is DDG 170, the first Flight 4 Burke. I think one of the neatest views of this ship is right down the horn, looking at it, you know, from this angle. It's a, it's a quite a, a good looking profile and a good looking ship that 130 millimeter rail gun right there has got a range of 120 to 150 miles depending on the type of shell they're shooting they have little winglets that would come out on this one and uh, would uh, allow it to increase its range and using all that high-tech equipment uh, will allow us to maintain uh, our uh, position uh, over at potential adversaries. So, hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you'll tell others about the Jeff Head channel on YouTube. Take a look, make comments, and I thank you for looking at this one. Bye bye.